this just arrived. This came actually from some other data recovery shop in Canada. Taurus 400 gig. This one says it's broken. We got a donor along with it. King Diane. They look the same, different brands. Two screws hold the SSD in place. My mic was off, um, but there was a capacitor right there that was half removed. I don't know why it was only half removed, but that's uh, what was there. So, um, because my <laughs> my dear my dear case is not gonna happen due to the uh, VCC short on the end. All that time was spent for nothing. Let's just make it all up with this guy here. Going back to the testing. So if this was um, removed, let's see, maybe they spotted that the unit was getting hot over here. Doesn't take a genius to, to rule that out. But you know what? So does not take the genius to check the VCC line before doing a bunch of soldering work. <laughs> Should have checked. Okay, so we have a jumped VCC here somehow. Some way. You know, failure on the controller is not an uncommon thing for these. So I would just say that there's a high chance that that is going to be the problem. But um, before we get into it, let's just double check and find out for sure. So we got a short over here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a pad, clean it up. Because this could be like a five minute thing here. Let's see. One of them is ground. And that's right here. Okay, let's pull up the infrared camera and see what's getting mega hot here. I'm gonna inject one volt. Okay, before I inject one volt, let me add something to inject it into. I don't see any uh, reasonable grounds here that I can attach myself to. So I'm just gonna grab like a tiny piece of the board right here. I'm really hoping this is gonna be a quick case. I don't wanna, I don't feel like doing much editing today. Especially like, I was fully ready to, to sit down and edit out the success story if the, if that flash drive case was a success. It's such a glorious fail at the end. It's almost worth filming, <laughs> you know? Like at least next time I'll remember that that this is how you can easily destroy a lot of your own personal time. So, okay, um, because we don't have the ground anywhere sticking out that I can just jam into, I'm gonna make like a jump, like an extension from, from here. Okay, like this, and like, like that. Now, this is good for the ground. Oh, this crocodile clip is really bad. It's barely clipping anything.
we're kind of running out of time so let's do this quickly I have my probe what do we see getting hot it's the switch right here Honestly, if the second drive is the same, that would be awesome, but something tells me that it's not the same, and I'm right, it's not the same. This is blue, this is black. Uh, with that being said, I might have something that looks like this in my stack. Um, I just gotta go through it. So first things first, uh, let's get uh, this switch out of the way. So uh, that will confirm for us that the line is now going to be open and uh, there are no further overheating. Put a bit beep test on. And what do you know? But we need this switch. S two G A one. J1 not exactly the same since I got a new mic I completely forgot to remove the protective sticker for the battery and uh, the receiver got discharged somewhere in the middle of the video so the rest of the sound was completely lost so let me just take you through what's going on here. Uh, after measuring these uh, power switches, I found uh, one that was um, putting out the exact same numbers as the survivor on the original device. So I decided to swap it over. And uh, before I did that, I removed the uh, survived switch and placed it in the position of the failed one check the same line the line was open so we were ready to go uh, here you see me probing the uh, values of what sort of voltages we should be uh, having on the pads with the uh, component removed and that's what uh, served as my kind of guideline to uh, locate the compatible unit after i found one uh, just simply took it off because the readings were all the same um, on the output as well and uh, the chip worked out great actually these uh, components here they're quite swappable there are different uh, variations of them and uh, as i was troubleshooting back and forth i actually uh, used some of the good working devices and had them swapped out just to make sure you know they're not causing any trouble so this device here is now patched up and uh, i attempted to fire it up Quickly it came ready and uh, gave us this red LED light as a sign of <laughs> being alive. I got so excited at this point because it even came up with the ID, but that was short-lived because after attempting to read any sector or sending any sort of command, the device would just go into dead as busy state and uh, I had no choice but to fire it up in a safe mode to attempt 
to build a translator table using a silicon motion utility from BC3000. I'm not sure how exactly that's going to pan out because I left it running when the case uh, was developing it. And uh, something like that I would most likely post on Instagram as a result once it's done. Uh, the bad news here is that this is a silicon motion controller. And as you can see, chips are getting detected as SanDisk. In my personal experience, usually this combination would be lacking read retry. And as a result, the reading of the unit is going to be extremely poor, even if the translator table is built. Now, that be, with that being said, there are other options that I would like to throw at it as uh, I get more time to work on it. But more on that uh, in uh, upcoming episodes. For now, guys, electrical function of this device has been restored. The reason why it didn't fire up, most likely as a power failure occurred, it was updating something to the firmware structures. And as a result, it got unfinalized. Just kind of like the old CDs when you would burn them. And if you don't record that finalizing track, uh, the CD, no matter how many songs you got written on it, they're not going to play. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.